I always wonder whether the world is full of foolish people because I don't understand the obsession over women's choices for their lives. A 13 year old is considered qualified to choose the career they'll pursue for the rest of their lives. There's a lot of pressure to reduce the age of consent for girls from 18 to 14 because they're considered mature by a patriarchal society. But suddenly, a 20 something, a 30 year old woman is not mature enough to make decisions about her own life or her own body. It's either the world is full of foolish people or the foolish ones are the loudest. I have always known that I don't want children because as a firstborn daughter, I have paid my dues. I have parented my siblings and myself. I don't know what being a child or teenager is. In fact, I don't understand people who say adulting is hard because I've always been an adult. When a child cries, I can tell what they mean because yes, children cry as a way to communicate. There's a hungry cry, a sick cry, a sleepy cry, an attention-seeking cry. I have to live with endless crippling anxiety for my own siblings. I worry so much about children that I didn't give birth to in a way that they never will worry about me and yet you think you can school me about having children. I have hand washed nappies with yellow and brown poop with a smell that hits the back of your nose enough to make you land in the afterlife. My eardrums have been subjected to louder than a soprano's decibels for hours on end and yet you think you can school me. I know what parenting is all about. You on the other hand have created fantasies about your children as your legacy, as your mini-me, as things you can control and you want to force everyone into the hell you're going to have to deal with because you don't want to be alone. What if your mother had made the same choice? Then I would have rejoiced. But since I'm here now, I will serve my life sentence in the best way I know, in the way I choose to. I think a lot of people forget that I also had a mother. I had grandmothers. When I say I don't want children, you suppose that they would be against it when indeed, it's because of reflecting upon their lives that I know this is the best choice for me. Furthermore, they don't disagree with my choices and they are in the afterlife. What makes you think you have merit over my life choices when women from my own bloodline who have gone through the full cycle of life have no qualms with my decisions who's going to take care of you in your old age well how about you ask those whose children are dead they had children their children died before them who's going to take care of them you don't think that such tragedy could come your way it's a pity you think that you are an exception and that's why you feel like you have the merit to dictate how everyone else should live their lives for the record if you think of your children as a retirement plan you're in for a rude shock because you fail to recognize that the cannibalistic systems that you're constantly supporting will ensure that your children have no time nor finances to take care of you. The future, even the present day actually, doesn't come with retirement plans. You're either going to work to your grave or save for a care home. I have created a habit of interrogating everything because blind obedience isn't an option in my world. Even for something that seems as basic as learning something, I constantly ask myself why I want to immerse myself in it. When it comes to my decisions, I know my why, which ensures that I see it through instead of doing something because I saw someone else say that it's great and not not. Truth is, everything has a good and a bad side. Everything. And anyone that tries to tell you otherwise is only trying to manipulate you. That also goes for having children. There's no endless paradise that you exist in once you have them. No matter how much love you have for your children, it's not going to protect them from disease, from bad people in the world, or from the cannibalistic systems that we have. Well, I was thinking about the subject matter of this video about being child free or choosing to be child free. It reminded me of a chapter in this book, Difficult Women, A History of Feminism in 11 Fights by Helen Lewis, which chronicles the stories of different women and their fights for feminism, and the fight for women's rights. It reminded me of the chapter about time, about how, because a lot of women are always so preoccupied with taking care of children, they don't have time to be fighting for women's rights or to fight for equality. <laughs> And a lot of people always brush this off. But as someone who grew up taking care of their siblings, I know this to be very right when I actually look back now. Because the fact that I was made to become like a parental figure to my siblings took my time away from me. I didn't have time to be a child. I barely had friends because I was always busy taking care of my siblings. I didn't even have time for my own hobbies. So on top of all of that, there's also doing the house chores and it's actually being at home right now that I'm recognizing how house chores take a lot 
over your time I have really reduced the amount of house shows that I am doing because I decided that I am not going to allow my brothers to not contribute to the household but even then it's still taking a lot of my time especially something like cooking the more people you have in the household the more time it's gonna take you to be cooking <laughs> but of course this is always being brushed off it's like oh it's supposed to be your duty and all that of course everyone knows now that a lot of house chores is a lot of unpaid labor and it's not to say that you should be getting anything out of it even the acknowledgement that this is work is always missing the fact that it's not respected as work and yet it demands a lot of energy from you it also demands your time and because it's really not acknowledged it means that you're using a lot of your time doing something that is taking you away from what you actually want to do but no one is actually going to acknowledge that isn't that one of the reasons why a lot of women are getting a lot of autoimmune diseases because you've been gaslighted so much to think that whatever you are doing is not valuable but everyone is benefiting from it I've seen so many women feel guilty about taking time for their hobbies and especially mothers like when a mother decides oh I want to take time for myself it's like you're being a bad mother how can a mother do this and this idea of productivity is something that is always demonizing taking time for leisure it's as if you're supposed to be productive all the damn time that's not being a human being that's being a human doing we've glorified being things outside of our natural selves so much that when we see someone being a human being you actually think that they are being abnormal but I think for me one of the radical acts I've decided I'm going to do is to ensure that I'm using my time for me I have decided that I'm just going to think like a man I'm only going to do things that have benefit to me I just notice that each and every time I sit down to film I'm wearing this jumper <laughs> I guess this is my filming uniform <laughs> I completed reading this book and I think this is one of the most brilliant books I've ever read I don't think there's a book that reminds you of African storytelling style than this the writing is very much metaphorical always has a lot of symbolism there's always a lot of life lessons that are infused into the story also very poetic we have the capability to bring creative solutions to the complexities to the complex problems of this world because of the unique worldviews that we have as Africans and the books that I'm going to be reading next are one this one this is called his worshipful majesty by TM Aluko this is also an African writer I found this in my father's library <laughs> and then the poet X which is one of my favorite books ever by Elizabeth Acevedo. If you grew up as a girl who always felt very overlooked in the household you would find a lot of solace in reading this story. I always reread my books and I think I read this at least once or twice every year. Many societies do not create open environments for parents to honestly talk about their experiences because of the fear that the reality of parenting would deter many young people from wanting children. And this worked for a very long time because when knowledge is withheld you make choices with this limited knowledge and you know you cannot really go back. You cannot return the child to where they come from. And this is why many women suffer from post-pregnancy blues anxiety and even depressions because they were never really prepared for the reality it's just recently that many women have come to know about the realities of childbirth a gruesome process was always marketed as the best thing ever as a non-issue as a two-minute process as widely portrayed in movies and yet women die during this process for many who get away with their lives they have to live with lifelong scars many caused by the neglect of health care providers who treat these women as nuisances and no we cannot argue about this when it's a reality that a lot of poor pregnant women receive the worst kind of health care in a lot of countries and I'm not even going to talk about how women are gaslighted when they complain about feeling like something is wrong and being told that they are overreacting only to end up with excessive bleeding with fistula and even death it's easy to scream about how everyone should have children when you don't have to put your body in danger to bring a child into a world that doesn't even care for women's humanity you're just seen as a vessel needed for nine months to bring yet another employee a worker a human resource to this world hooray productivity perhaps instead of finding ways of using the law to force women to reproduce look at the world that you have created by stubbornly supporting this bogus oppressive system if you put that energy into eradicating prejudice in healthcare fueled by misogyny if you worked hard to eradicate pedophiles if you made it your life's purpose to ensure that children
children and mothers had access to basic needs, we wouldn't have to worry about a shrinking population. But of course, even when your politicians are stealing from you and eliminating you, we would rather endure that as long as you can get 15 seconds to control a woman in her life. You'd rather burn in hell as long as you can get just one second to tell a woman how to live her life.